Hi boys and girls, we're going to be reading Amazing Animals. Got a polar bear, a giraffe, a dolphin. This is, this is Gwendolyn Hooks and she wrote this story and she loves animals. This story is about wild animals, she explains. I don't own any wild animals, but I do have a pet cat. <laughs> so you can make about books about things that you don't own. Of course you can. This is informational text. It's going to give us some facts. And this is just says animals. This is lesson. Oopsie, you can't see that. This is lesson 22. And we're in our Unit 5, Grade 1, text. So, I shall read it to you. And before I do that, I just want to show you this picture of a family. This is a mother duck. And she looks like she has three ducklings. And ducklings hatch from eggs. She lays the eggs. Wait. Where are they swimming? Oh, they're swimming in like a pond or a lake. It has to have fresh water. If you're a duck, you have to live near fresh water. Um, the mom protects them. So if someone's going to mess with them, then she's going to mess with them back because she protects them. She helps them find food. She keeps them safe. And that's all I really wanted to say. This is one of the amazing animals that we have on our planet. So let's read about some more amazing animals. So it's Shona. A camel with his big eyes. This one has a long beak. They're different, right? They're all animals, but they're different. This one has a long beak. This animal has thick fur because where he lives it's super cold, right? This one has a big squeak. I think they're trying to rhyme. Big eyes, long beak. Thick fur, big squeak. Let's go ahead and put this down a little bit. Animals get a lot of help as they grow up. Let's find out about eight amazing animals. Look at the picture. What do you think this says? Polar bear. A polar bear has thick fur. Each hair is like a tube. The hair has no color, like glass. The sun makes it look white. How does thick white fur help? Well, it has to be thick for them to to live there because, you know, they can't go and buy themselves a coat. So it has to be thick for them to live in such a cold place. And it helps that it's white because then they can sneak up on animals easier. Aww. <laughs> He's between his mother's legs. Thick fur helps polar bears stay warm. The color of their fur looks the same as snow. This helps them hide. Where does this cute young polar bear like to hide? And we can see underneath his mom. Okay, look at the picture and look at the word. What do you think that says? Elephant. An elephant has a long nose. The nose is called a trunk. Did you guys know that those are called trunks? It takes many years for an elephant to grow two big teeth. Do you see those tusks? These teeth are called tusks. How do tusks and a trunk help? Well, if they're um, if they want to get something off a tree, they can lift up their trunk and pull it down. Um, and they don't have to get on their knees because remember they're really giant animals. So 
They don't have to get on their knees to suck water. They can just suck it up um, in their trunk. And then these could help defend against lions or something. This mother, uh, maybe she wants to defend her baby from a lion. And so she'll go poke him with that, with her tusks. So elephants use their tusks to scrape bark off trees. Then they eat the bark. These elephants are learning to use their trunks to get water. Sometimes they will spray water at a friend. Okay, so I didn't know that part about them using their tusks to scrape the bark off the trees. That's a, something I learned today. That's good informational text. What do you think that says? Camel. Some camels have one hump, like this one. Some have two. All camels have two rows of eyelashes. Okay, so how do humps and thick eyelashes help? Let's see how, th what, how they're going to answer that. A camel's hump has fat inside. On long trips, a camel's body uses the fat for food. Oh, so there, even the little baby has a baby hump. A camel's eyelashes keep out the desert sand. So sometimes in, the, in some deserts it's really windy and dirt, less dirt will get in her eye if she has two sets of eyelashes. This baby camel will follow his mother when the herd goes from place to place. Okay, that's a nice safe thing to do, to follow his mother. What do you think it says? It says, duck. A duck is a bird. It has two feet, and each foot has three toes. Okay, one, two, three. That looks like it has four toes right there. Interesting. A duck has a beak, too. How do feet and a beak help? Okay, the kind of feet they have. They have webs between their toes, and that's to help them swim more quickly. And the beak, well, they're called ducks because they duck underneath the water to try to catch fish and insects and pull up weeds that grow down there. So they need their beak to catch them or to pull up the weeds or to get their food. Oh, look at the ducklings. Ducks use their feet to swim in the water or walk on land. They use their beaks to eat plants and bugs. Look, this duck uses her beak to clean her friend. So maybe she saw some mud on him, so she's going to like sort of take it off with her beak. Well, look at what a long neck this giraffe has and a long tongue too. What does this say? That says giraffe. A giraffe has spots. Yes, he does, or she does. A giraffe has a long neck. How do spots and a long neck help? So where they live, how do they help? A giraffe's spots help it hide. A giraffe's long neck helps it reach the leaves of trees. Okay. This giraffe's long neck helps her reach her baby. She gives him a big kiss. And I guess they can do that with their tongue or just putting their, their I don't want to call it a snout or a muzzle, but whatever that part is, their nose, she touches her baby. And that shows her baby that she loves him or her. What animal is this? It's a porcupine. A porcupine has soft quills 
when it is born. The quills get sharp in a day or two. How do quills help? Well, they're a very slow animal, and so they need to have lots of quills to poke the animals that are trying to pounce on them from behind. Look at that. He wants to eat them, but like, ugh, how can he? He's going to get poked. Quills, that's these right here, help keep a porcupine safe. If an animal begins to come too close, the porcupine backs into it. The sharp quills hurt. Quills tell this cub to stay away. Oh, so it's not a fully grown lion. Still learning its life lessons, like don't mess with porcupines. Okay, what's this? It's a turtle. What do you think this says? Turtle. A turtle has a shell that is very hard. How does a hard shell help? Because remember, turtles are slow too, right? But if you want something easy to eat, you're not going to pick a turtle because, you know, it's so hard. They would probably, the, trying to bite through the shell would probably break your teeth. A turtle can hide inside its shell from an animal that may hurt it. The turtle waits until the animal goes away. Then the turtle comes back out. You're safe now, turtle. <laughs> this turtle has a long tail. Is that his tail? That's a mighty long tail. Oh, some dolphins. This says dolphin. A dolphin's tail has two parts called flukes. A dolphin has two flippers. So here's the tail. This is one fluke. This is another fluke. And then these are his two flippers. Well, I sh you could see them better here. One, two. How do tail flukes and flippers help? A dolphin flips its tail flukes up and down to swim fast. It uses its flippers to turn to the left or right. Okay, so its flukes make it go fast and its flippers help it turn. These two dolphins swim away fast. Who will be first? Have fun, dolphins. Aww. All right, let's ask our questions. How do some animals stay safe? Okay, well, I guess if there was like a big, um, like a, um, a killer whale that wanted to eat one of these dolphins, he could swim away really fast. Um, let's see, so that's one way it can stay safe. This turtle can stay safe by tucking its head and its feet into its shell so it won't get eaten. This porcupine can stay safe by backing into predators with its quills. Um, this giraffe has spots on it and it sort of helps it blend in, though you, right now it's pretty much standing out. Okay, how do ducks stay safe? Well, they could fly away. Um, if a fox is after them, they can just go fly into the water because they know he's not going to go get them out in the middle of the water. Okay, the camels can stay safe with their backpack, <laughs> their hump, full of fat to keep them alive on long trips. Okay, well, we get the idea. They give us ideas on how all these animals could stay safe, except for maybe the polar bear. He, No one needs to stay safe. He doesn't really need to stay safe because he's like top of the food chain. How does a dolphin's tail help it live? Okay, we already talked about it being able to swim away really quickly with its tail, you know. Okay, so that's it. Tell about some parts other animals have that help them. How do your hands help you? Let's first talk about, let's just go back to the beginning where the 
polar bear was because we didn't get to talk about him. But let's talk about his thick fur and how it's so necessary for him to have thick fur to live in such a cold place. So that part of his body helps him. Okay, did we talk about elephants? Their trunks help them. They can get drinks of water without having to get on their knees. Um, they can pull down um, leaves from trees to eat with their trunks. Okay, and and then it just says, how do your hands help you? Oh my goodness. So many ways that our hands help us. We can take care of ourselves, brush our hair, brush our teeth, bathe, fix ourselves things to eat. We can write. We can turn the pages in a book. I mean, that's just one of our body parts, but it's a very important part. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story, that informational text by, was her name Gwendolyn? Um, let's see. Let's say her name one more time. By Gwendolyn Hooks. Good job. All right, boys and girls, hope you enjoyed that story. That was our day one, our first read of that story. I think we did a good job. Bye-bye.